quite uncanny. Here's your look at the new Coda Bakia X-Men 92. This is the Gambit and Rogue 2-pack Artifacts statue. Gambit and Rogue are one of six two-packs available from Kotobukiya. Collect all six two-packs to complete the entire X-Men team. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is measure off how tall each one of these statues stand. Why don't we first start with Gambit? He's a little bit smaller than Rogue. And we'll stop the tape measure right there. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, Gambit stands 6.9, about 7 inches in height, which works in centimeters out to be 17.5, 17 and a half centimeters tall. Now let's go ahead and switch that over to Rogue. Rogue, obviously, like I said, is a little bit taller than Gambit. To the very top of Rogue's head, you're looking at a statue that stands 8.6 inches in height. In centimeters, once again, switching that quickly over, because the mob is impatient. 21, about 22 centimeters, 21.8 to be exact. Now, these are pre-painted, snap-together models. Everything, like I said, is already fully painted. It only involves you as the collector to pick up this set for yourself and put everything together. Why don't we first put everything together for Gambit? We'll start with his lower base. Now, these are the classic 92 X-Men designs, similar again to the 90s X-Men cartoon. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom base. We're gonna then take the top torso that has the trademark pink top and the blue collar there. And we're just going to snap that into place. This one actually faces forward, pretty straightforward. Then we're going to go ahead and take the arm. Now, the one that has the hole in it is going to go on this side. That's going to hold its staff. If you're a little still uncertain, you can also check the shapes of these as well. So yeah, this one has kind of like the shape of a T, followed by the shape of the T right there. This side doesn't have that. It's almost like the shape of an L. And then one better, you also have the L and the R to tell you which side the arms go into. So you just snap that into place, just like that. And then we can go ahead and snap the hand into, into place. Now with the hand, this one here has the playing cards, as you can see right there. There's no facings on the cards, no suits, no numbers. But again, from the from the end, from where you're looking at it, still looks really neat that he just would have a stack, a, a, a fanned out section of cards. Now this one's neat because you don't actually put it in from the front. Instead, the cards actually go to the back and you just snap the arm in place once again. And now you've got the cards featured on the back, a deck of cards that Gambit is ready to throw. Now, before we put Gambit's head in place, I just want to show you the close-up look at the head sculpt. Head sculpt and coloring, superb. Uh, pretty much expected when you start picking up these Cota Bikia pieces. The paint is always phenomenal on these, and Gambit here is no exception. One thing I like, and it's the smallest of touches, it's these little small details that catch my attention the most, is the fact that they put the outlining around the teeth, a divide, if you will, between the lips and the teeth inside. This is good because it does separate the coloring. If they had just left the teeth white and the flesh tone around it, the teeth might have actually been sacrificed, lost, almost in the mix of the lighter color scheme. Of course, his trademark black pupils 
uh, or red pupils, I should say, on black eyeballs there are present as well. And now when you are putting this one in place, you're actually not going to be putting it front this way here. The way he's standing, he actually stands like this, and that'll be kind of a guide as to which way the head goes. The head's going to still point forward, but the body is going to be slightly shifted to the side. The last finishing touches are just to take his staff, which as you can see has been painted here in silver, and you're going to slide this through his hand. This is entirely up to you as to how long, how far in you want the pole to be. Um, but judging by the way his weight is, I would actually, I'd favor having less of the, the, the staff facing forward and the rest of it actually sticking further back. Now you can actually do the opposite to that. You can kind of bring more of the staff forward, but I kind of actually like it a little bit higher up myself. And there is Gambit. Let's go ahead now and put Rogue together. Because Rogue is technically a flying character, they give you a clear, almost like a thimble, if you will, in which the character is going to be standing atop of. Now there's a hole right at, the, right at the very, very top, right there, and there's the peg on the on the front portion of her foot. The heel actually sits to the farther back there, and that just plugs into place. Couldn't be any bit easier than that. We can then take the torso piece, which this one already has the arms in place. You can see the X logo featured on both the ends of the sleeves. The black collar's also been painted in there as well. Some stripings there on the top of her outfit. And again, the trademark rogue jacket. We're gonna go ahead and snap that into place. And this one, much like the gambit, will face forward. And then lastly, we'll add to the, the top of that, of course, add rogue's head. A beautiful rendition of rogue. The long flowing curly locks of red with the trademark white on the top there. It looks like it was pulled right out of the X-Men comics. Even like the cartoon nailed the look of Rogue. And uh, it kind of, like between both these statues, Kota Bikia has kind of done a nice blending between some of the stuff we would see in the comics uh, of certainly of that time period and also the X-Men cartoon. Just again, a beautiful, just a beautiful head sculpt there of Rogue. And we're gonna go ahead and just attach this. This will fit into place and her head unlike gambits, will face forward. And the guideline will kind of be the indicator to you as well as to which way. I love that they do specific, unique shapes, telling you there is only one way to plug, to plug this in place. So when in doubt, if you're a little confused which with, with which way uh, the head is supposed to go, just line it up to the guidelines there, the shape of the shapes, if you will, and uh, then you, you're good to go. And then you've got yourself two finished statues ready to be put on display. Now this two pack is of a bigger diorama display. The sets include Wolverine and Jubilee as set one, Cyclops and Beast set two, Professor X is on his own as set three, set four is Bishop and Storm, set five is Phoenix, and then of course set six here is Gambit and Rogue. Now the beauty of these are Sometimes when you get a larger diorama, build as you go, eventually putting everything together, the sum of the parts often at times are a lot better than the actual individual pieces because the individual pieces feel incomplete. With these, on the other hand, and all the pieces that Kotobuki has released to this larger X-Men set diorama, each one of them you could actually, in theory, display on their own. So if you want to just have, for example, Gambit, displayed on his own. You don't have to necessarily buy all the sets. This is smart and a good way that Kota Bikia had gone with this. Instead of actually requiring you as the collector to build and only finish everything once you've collected all six sets. Here in theory, again, you could really only buy, if you only want to just get the Gambit and Rogue set, you could do that. If you only want to get, for example, like the Cyclops and Beast, you could do that as well. So I like that these are all fully finished all on their own. Once again, looking at the Gambit, very faithful in colors to the original comics and the 90s cartoon. I like that they've kept it really light, not really adding much in the way of secondary paint to it. Like the boots, for example, the side stripes of pink, even like the torso, only have one color. And I really like that. It feels like it's more an animated character rather than something that has to be rooted in reality. And reality-based statues 
Of course, you would have all the shading around the torso areas. You'd probably have light reflecting off in a lighter paint that's been applied to the, uh, the pants, for example. No, they've kept it to one single color. In fact, everywhere on this figure is one single color. Even like the head portrait, going back to that once again, is kept to the one pastel flesh tone that they put to it. And I really do like that. Again, it makes it feel like it's more something like an animated cell. Something that you would have seen like where, for example, if they were making the X-Men cartoon back in the 90s. Maybe in theory, these could have been the original models in which the animators were taking their source from, their, their ideas from when they were animating them. As we move to Rogue, always been a big fan of this look of Rogue, and much like Gambit, of course, the colors, the design, and costumes change over the years. But like for me, this is iconic. This is the look for X-Men. And eventually, as Marvel Studios has now acquired the X-Men property, I kind of hope in some ways that we're kind of getting away from more realistic clothing for these characters. And I kind of would love to see them go to something like this. Of course, they would have to tweak it slightly, but I still think this color palette, the bright greens, in this case for Rogue, the bright yellows, and the, all the bright colors we've looked at for Gambit, I think could easily work well in a live-action X-Men film. The key, I think, is making characters that are relatable. And certainly while we're not talking necessarily about the X-Men film, because it's going to be long into the future that that's going to happen, I really, again, love, always loved this design of Rogue. This is definitively the Rogue that I think of when I think Rogue. Beautiful head sculpt. We've already looked at that. Long, flowing, curly red hair. Love that. And again, there's not really any other secondary colors here. Everything is single. Single yellow. No additional colors to the green other than the green. But you get all this great wrinkling and just texturing around the areas of the boot where natural folds and creases would develop. The belt sits slightly hung to the side. It's not sitting completely leveled. And again, I love the pose that they've put both of these characters in. It's sort of iconic. And I know I say iconic so frequently in this review. It's such iconic poses for both the characters. When I often think Gambit, I'm going to be thinking Gambit with his staff and his playing cards kind of concealed behind his back or about to throw them out. And certainly with Rogue, I always picture Rogue in flight. And I think Kotobukiya nailed both the likeness and the poses for both these statues. These statues from Kotobukiya are real true love letters to fans of the original 90s X-Men, whether it be following them in their exploits in the comics or following them in the animated 90s X-Men cartoon. For me, this is the look of X-Men, always has been, always will be. And I think Kotobuki has really captured their essence right down to the box. Even if we look at the box, it looks like something that we would have gotten back in the day for promotional artwork for either of the X-Men cartoon or something we would have gotten in vintage figures from the folks over at Toy Biz. Uh, the beauty, again, of these sets is that you can display them as collectively as the X-Men or singularly if you want to just display them as Gambit and Rogue. Heck, you really don't even have to display them together anyways. If you want to just display Gambit on his own or Rogue on her own, you can do that. And they don't feel like they're a smaller piece to a bigger puzzle. They feel finished and fully alive on their own. And they don't really require you to build the entire diorama to, to give them that finished look. Even though I'm sure, much like myself, most fans of the original X-Men comics and the 90s cartoon will likely want to pick up all of these sets to eventually complete the entire X-Men team. If you guys are interested in picking up these for yourself, the good news is the X-Men 92 Gambit and Rogue Artifacts Statue Set, that's a mouthful, is currently available now online or in most comic book stores as well. And again, if you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, you can pick up all of them. You can pick up some of them if you want. It's entirely up to you. Based on what I'm seeing here and the work that they've done and put into these two pieces, I definitely would be considering most definitely wanting to complete the X-Men team and getting the rest of the members. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Coda Bakia reviews, there's playlists called Coda Bakia. Or if you want to check out the Artifacts statue reviews, there's playlists for that as well. Make sure as, as well, my friends, that you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, because certainly more reviews will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys.
and I'll see you guys next time.